years after the initial report. So there's no any report after the 2000 report. So there's a slowness in the in the process of South. And regarding your comments on Philippines and Indonesia, actually in my case, uh, my research was limited to international instruments and the domestic picture, the comparison. So I'd like to extend my research based on the lessons learned from Philippines and Indonesia in the future. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Professor. Uh, and I, my, uh, as assessment on particular statute on the office of missing person. Actually, I was talking uh, a comparative analysis uh, in with regard to the International uh, Convention on uh, Disappearances plus uh, the newly introduced uh, statute. Now, Professor was uh, very concerned about the statistics. I see now when it comes to this uh, right to flee from disappearances in two types of uh, voluntary and involuntary. Now this has been very outspoken uh, topic in uh, this has been very outspoken uh, topic in the international context as well as uh, it has been uh, very outspoken uh, issue in the uh, uh, regional mechanisms as well. Uh, now when it comes to the basic regional mechanisms, they have very good jurisdiction uh, and jurisprudential aspects on this uh, enforced disappearances. Now when it comes to Sri Lanka, uh, we just uh, passed the statute in last year now this year very recently we just appointed the relevant committee but still we do not have any operational type of uh, issue in the, with regard to this committee of uh, uh, nominated and appointed under this uh, particular statute. But however I wish that if this uh, general public has uh, a faith on the mechanism and if the, sta if the state can uh, make them a certain awareness on the, the rights in relation to these kinds of people and how this uh, statute and the, the state going to guarantee this uh, right or the people who has been victimized uh, then I think this uh, system would be operated uh, in more uh, comprehensive manner other than that if the system cannot win the hearts of the people and the transparency could not be ensured I don't think this would be successful mechanism. However, this uh, statutory, uh, I just came to know that the person who, uh, uh, who was in the statutory drafting uh, process was just sitting near myself. I just came to know that factor. And uh, so I don't think that uh, if, uh, unless otherwise the people would have a sufficient knowledge about the mechanism, and the faithfulness uh, with regard to the system, I, I won't believe that uh, even though we have a particular framework, this would be appropriate. But sorry, Professor, I don't have statistics uh, because this is just a theoretical, hypothetical maybe. I don't know whether this will function properly. Uh, first of all, I must apologize for uh, rushing through my presentation and talking so quickly. Uh, I think uh, you noticed that uh, so South Asians tend to talk quite fast and I particularly uh, talk quite fast and I've been doing by my lecturers that I talk too fast. Um, so anyway, basically there are uh, four different uh, constitutional house to clauses in the Sri Lankan constitution. So the first is Article 83. 80 sub, uh, sub, uh, subsection 3. So under article 83, that's like a well-known uh, article where a bill becomes law once a law is passed that cannot be called into question by any court or tribunal. So that is uh, basically to uh, protect the legislature's uh, supremacy of the parliament so that the judiciary does not interfere. Uh, the second one, article 81.3, that refers to the imposition of civic disabilities uh, that is on uh, members of parliament uh, where uh, the parliament itself sits and decides whether to impose uh, disciplinary action on uh, parliamentary members so uh, that 
in my paper, I've argued that since that is, uh, even though the constitution says that the judiciary should not intervene, since that is an innately judicial function that the legislature itself is actually performing, uh, I uh, believe that in those instances, the court should be allowed to uh, review such action because uh, the legislature is performing an innately uh, judicial function rather than its legislative function. So that's Article 81.3 and then Article uh, 154F. So Article 54, uh, that was introduced by the 13th Amendment. That was when the provincial council system was uh, introduced to Sri Lanka. So uh, this is with regard to the governor of the provincial council. And uh, the constitution says that a court cannot question whether a certain uh, function falls within the ambit of the governor's discretion. So this con house to clause is con uh, comparatively different to the others that exist in the constitution because this doesn't say that the court can't review the decision itself. It says that the court can cannot question whether that particular act or that uh, function falls within the discretion of the uh, of the governor of the provincial council. And then finally, Article 61A, uh, that is what I focused on because uh, that is something that hasn't been subject to a lot of academic debate since it was introduced quite recently. So Article 61A is with regard to uh, the authority given by the uh, Public Service Commission, the Public Service Commission. So the PSC was introduced by the 17th Amendment to our Constitution where independent commissions were brought in. So under that, if an authority who has been delegated power by the Public Service Commission, a decision made by such an authority uh, cannot be questioned in a court of law. Uh, however, in my presentation, I've uh, argued that since there are other extrajudicial remedies, uh, such as uh, the appeal to the Public Service Commission, and then uh, you can appeal against the Public Service Commission's uh, decision to the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. So, due to that, and also the availability of the, uh, fundamental rights the jurisdiction which allows a person to file for uh, the, and the infringement of a fundamental right at the Supreme Court itself. So the presence of these extrajudicial remedies and the judicial remedy of applying for a fundamental, a fundamental rights infringement, that, allow, that justifies the fact that Article 61A uh, precludes review in cases, of, uh, cases where the PSC has uh, dedicated the authority. So those are the four main master clauses defined in the Constitution of Sri Lanka. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. how big the problem was. Sadly, no empirical data exists as to how big the problem is, mainly because it's hard to research on every business available in Sri Lanka or in any country. And also, most of the high-income earning businesses have been driven underground far from the prime eyes of the authorities. So, mostly the targets are set based on the existing levels of compliance. However, it's also doubtful if the existing files are being assessed at their current amounts. And then the other option, the question was if it was a general phenomenon or if it was intrinsic to one section of the taxpayers. It's actually a general phenomenon. Tax evasion is always observed worldwide, so it does not restrict itself to a country. And it's always, I think it's human behavior to not pay taxes. Thank you.
RT, uh, right to Information Act number 12 of uh, 2016, which is enacted recently and uh, commenced, commenced it, its uh, implementation recently. Uh, maintain, enhance, um, uh, generally improve the well being of the uh, general public by striking the balance between the uh, the principle of privacy and uh, the uh, interest of the state. Thank you. Thank you. Question. Uh, actually, right to access to information is a very important right. That's why we have uh, enacted that legislation, I think. Uh, I think this country wanted it for a long time. Uh, actually, privacy is also needed in certain circumstances. That, that's why Section 5 provides uh, exceptions to <coughs> that right under certain circumstances. Uh, so I think, uh, uh, in my view, I think the legislation contains enough provisions as to uh, the maintenance of secrets because it speaks about national security and uh, as I said here the, inf the information are cutting like something like medical records, bills and uh, so those types of uh, very strictly uh, what we call, uh, what we consider uh, confidential or certain types of inf information that should remain private the privacy should be maintained, they have been given an exception under this act. Well, this